become an astronaut. I wanted to be actually a neuroscientist. I kind of wanted to be a maths professor, actually. I wanted to like create like clothing or create a building or create like a product. I liked legal studies in high school, so he's like, oh, you'll be a lawyer. Uh, I liked business studies, like, oh, you'll be an entrepreneur. But looking at IT now with concepts like machine learning and AI, it's another avenue to do something quite similar. What inspires me about technology is how big it is. Everyone, I think, has a role in technology these days. I think it was the rapid advances in technology. Like it suddenly, just suddenly appeared. <laughs> suddenly appeared and suddenly grew so fast and then it felt like you had to be in it to be in the world. Uh, it's something that changes the world we live in. Every little revolution that it has, you know, we have a huge impact. I think about kind of how I can be part of those products. Um, and essentially what I can do there is kind of shape the way that the world is going to become. Finding new innovative ways of solving problems in our daily life and that's what really excites me because I want to make something new, make something fun which would improve people's lives basically. In the future I want to be a user experience designer because I just love designing the flow of interfaces and making sure that they're beautiful but also functional. Where I want to be in the future is uh, teaching kids about technology. Being a place in life where I can do what WiseTech does, where I can contribute in a lot of different ways. WiseTech is our biggest sponsor and has been for I don't know how long, but a significant time. And essentially what that does is it allows us students who have very minimal experience to essentially go into the industry and learn and be treated like employees of these companies, uh, which is really, really awesome. I don't mind being in any company as long as their vision is innovation. Here at WiseTech, our credo is to always innovate, to never stop creating new things. The one thing I'd definitely say is follow your dream and find a place where you want to work, not where you have to work. I'm going to try to make this helpful. I'm going to try to ground uh, what, how you get into IT and what it means to be in IT and how you can make something of yourself and something for yourself and for your community. A long time ago, when my brother was at the predecessor to this university, the Institute of Technology, he was doing an accounting degree and he was having trouble getting access to computers to do his assignments. And I was working as a musician, so I started as a musician. And he uh, kept on complaining about not having access. So I went out and I researched and I bought a predecessor to the PC, a microcomputer, and I brought it home and I set it up and I said, here it is, you can do your assignments. He never touched it. But I did, I started playing games, and then I started trying to understand how the computer worked, and I started, I bought a book on assembler and a book on C programming, and I built little attachments and made lights flash on the computer, and quite soon I was a technology guy, not a musician anymore. If you think about that journey, um, I started this business. This business uh, is worth about $1.6 billion. It's listed on the Australian Securities Exchange. It listed last April, April 11, and it's, uh, according to Citibank, the, the best IPO over $100 million of this last 12 months. And we're very proud to be a very, very Australian-owned business and created here. Uh, I grew this in our basement, in, our, in a basement in my uh, house in Newtown, and we grew steadily. And now we're in 125 countries, we have 800 staff, and most of those staff, the majority of them are in Sydney. And we are, as John said, a very strong employer and a sponsor of this university, a number of degrees, and a very keen advocate of this uh, ACS Big Day in. So I started when I was very young, I was working with my, in my grandparents' business as a dishwasher. And then I worked with my father as a refrigeration mechanic. I became a musician. I repaired musical instruments. I built lighting. Once I started with computers, I started building lighting control systems. Uh, and electronics, and then technology distribution, and then systems integration. And then finally, about 22 years ago, I founded this business. This business was, was founded on my credit card, which had a credit limit of about $5,000, so it's not that much money. So it's within reach of anybody that p wants to put effort in. And as I said today, on the stock exchange, on the Australian Securities Exchange, it's worth about $1.6 billion. Um, I found a, a very boring but very complex industry, logistics, and I, it needed a much better solution, and we created that solution. And we, a small Australian company, beat everybody else in the world 
by being smart, by working hard, by being passionate about what we did and making something better than anybody else could make. And that's really important. You can do this too. Logistics is actually a very big industry. The uh, world gross product is about $74 trillion. Um, and the world of logistics is about 12% of that. So that's actually not, that should be $12 trillion GDP, not $12 billion. That's my typo. Um, we think we can uh, get about 1% of that and it's probably about $120 billion of revenue if we keep going for the longest that we possibly can and win as much as we possibly can. So that's a, a big business when you think about it. We're not that big yet. Uh, that small dedicated team that I built in my basement, we wrote lots of code, we did any job we could, I answered the phones, did support, did sales, so did my, so did my founding friends, and we built a business that was very big, but started very, very small, and started by just simply learning things. We had tremendous fun, we learned lots of stuff, and look where we are now. And this is something that you can do too. Three million hours of development later, we have a global product called CargoWise One. That product is truly global. It is the recognised leader in global logistics platforms. Even the world number one DHL Global Forwarding has bought our product globally. And uh, I think that speaks volumes to Australian innovation and the power that we've got if we put our mind to things. But ultimately, and this is what I want everybody to think about, our credo says we will change the world of logistics one innovation at a time. I want you all to want to change the world as well. Technology is the ultimate game changer. It allows you to drive ideas and create new realities. And if you haven't seen that, just look at what Google's done, what Microsoft's done, what Apple's done, what all these other technology companies have done. We're doing our bit in logistics and we're being very prominent in that space. That's a complex technical space, I'm not gonna bore you with that. But have fun, build a tribe of people around you that know how to do things and share the value that you created with the rest of your friends and the community, that's the big deal. So, this is not a long presentation, I've got something else to share with you. Um, but just to put this in concept, in context, um, Australian companies actually do amazingly well in the world of technology. Here you're looking at LinkedIn, and the founders and LinkedIn and ended up with only 21% of the company. Facebook, 36% of the company on IPO. Instagram, 50%. But Atlassian, which is of course a Sydney-based global software company, their founders, co-founders, have 75% of the company on IPO. And when we IPO'd last year, our, myself and the insiders that founded the company had 85% of the company. So not so much needing Silicon Valley, we were able to do things by ourselves and hold more value for ourselves and in Australia than is normal in the global technology companies. Australia has a real advantage. We've, we're clever, we've got a stable environment, our pol politics are slightly less uh, confused than perhaps other countries that you see in the news every day tweeting. You know who I mean. And, um, and I think we, we do have the opportunity here to do some very big things. So my company is going to do something for each and every single student in this room and for every school that's attended. We're going to give you something of real value. Have you got this card in your bags? Can you please get it out if you've got it? We're giving away uh, a Grok Learning uh, Code Challenge. It's an introductory course on how to program. The card describes the course and it's available for every one of you and any other friends in your school that didn't, didn't have the ability to attend but are interested in development. This is free and provided by WiseTech and Grok Learning in partnership. So every single one of you has the ability to enter this, learn how to develop in Python, which is a very simple and easy to use programming language, to start somewhere so that you can get somewhere big. But there's more. For every 10 students that finish this course and do all 40 questions correctly, because that's how you finish, you will get a BBC Micro, uh, this, this is the enrolment, and you'll win a BBC Micro bit, which is a little 
uh, embedded computer board that you can do lots of experiments on and lots of coding on. That's free for you for every 10 students. If, you, if there's 10 students, you get one. If there's 20 students, you get two. So please, if your teacher's in the room, please take note of that or tell your teachers. We want to grant to the school a BBC microbit for every 10 students that completes, completes this course. OK? Does that sound like a reasonable thing to do? That was very poor. Come on. Yes? yes. OK. I think that's all I'm going to say because I want this to be a question and answer session. I want people to ask interesting questions for everybody. And I want to use the microphones. If we can have people with microphones, can we have the first question from anybody? There, right there. Stand up and speak very loudly. Uh, did any of the work you did as a musician help for uh, your work in ICT later? Yes. So musicianship is a very creative outlet. If you're an artist, if you're a musician, an actor, Anything to do with the arts, it's a good feed-in. The humanities actually connect to, science, to technology and science. It's a very important thing to understand how to be creative, not just how to write code. Over here with the microphone. Go ahead. When you were in your bas basement, did you get any support from your family or anyone else to do what you were doing? The biggest support I got from my family was that my, my grandparents taught me how to work hard. I was working from the age of 12 washing dishes. I then I served food, then I s probably illegally served alcohol behind the bar. And, uh, and then I worked as a waiter, and then I sold receptions. So that was very important. And my father, who was an engineer, I worked in his factory, and I learned how to weld and how to wire things and the basics of electricity and so forth. So I had a learning childhood with my parents supporting me well. And then when I went out on my own, my grandfather loaned me $5,000. And that was it. Everything else he said I had to work for myself. And that was probably better than helping me more. We've got another microphone in front of people right here. Can you stand up? <coughs> Go ahead. How many? Oh. <laughs> it's quite loud. How many businesses worldwide use your product? About 6,000 corporations use our software, including seven of the top 25 largest global forwarders, logistics companies. What are some names of those companies? Well, DHL is one. I mentioned them before. DHL is well-renowned, uh, the largest global forwarder. Uh, DSV, which is Danish. Uh, Toll, which is an Australian company now owned by uh, Japan Post. Uh, Main Freight, which is a New Zealand company. Jodas, which is French. Uh, I can go on, but I'm not going to read 6,000 names out. Over there, sir. Hello? Yeah, so I just wanted to know, um, where would you suggest beginning for someone if you wanted to start a tech industry? Well, where you are now, do this. All right. <laughs> and when you've done that, there's, uh, I think, uh, a 20 or $30 enrollment for the entire year for all the courseware. So it's quite cheap and you can probably, con if you pass well and you get a BBC micro for your school, you can probably convince your parents to pay the 30 bucks. And if you can't, come we'll and do. I'll pay it. I'll, if you can't do that, I'll pay for it. Okay? <laughs> so I want everybody to think about this very seriously. Um, we seem to have a slight gender bias. There's more males and females asking questions. Can I have that lady there? What was your vision for WiseTech when you first founded it? It, it was a lot less than it is today. <laughs> so I, when I founded WiseTech, I had a vision, and it was a seriously big vision, I thought. It was to be a successful business in Sydney. Now, we are in 125 countries, and we've got customers all over the world. And the company's, as I said, worth 1.6 billion. That wasn't the vision that I had. That vision evolved over time. But I was always pushing to the future and trying to do something more than I thought was reasonable, more than other people thought was reasonable. In fact, I was told many times by Australian investors that it wouldn't work and that I shouldn't bother trying. Australians don't do that. That's not what Australian tech companies are about. You know, we're a services industry. You can't compete against American technology companies. They're always better. All of that's wrong, it's just self, it's a failure to understand the fundamentals of innovation. Who's got the microphone now? Um, what was the biggest challenge in creating your company? I'm, where are you? I've lost you. Oh, here, thank you. <laughs> uh, the biggest challenge. Well, so it remains the biggest challenge. It is always, always, always what is called the war on talent or the war for talent. We need smart people 
that want to be in technology, that want to help us change the world. We need you to become smarter, better and well-educated in technology and want to be in technology. One more here. I was wondering what new innovations is WISAC looking into? That's a great question. Uh, so in recent years, since about 2012, we've basically finished all of the deep functionality things that we need to do to run logistics globally. We're continuing to innovate on functionality, but now these days we think, we think we're two to three years ahead of our competitors. What we're now focusing on is uh, automation, uh, natural language processing, which means the computers understand the structure of words and sentences and are able to process that, and machine learning, including the ability for the machine to do much of the work that has to be done manually in logistics at the moment. Our goal is within five years to have 80% of work done by the computer supporting the people doing the work. And for the very complex, highly skilled work to be done by people, and the very rote, repetitive, low-value work to be done by computers. Okay. Uh, yes. Hi. Yes, um, I was wondering what skills you need to like start your own company. Well, I always figured that I was somewhat unemployable, so I had to start my own company. That was then I was going to get a job. I don't know if that was true or not, but it's funny. Look, I think the answer is that you have a life where you're going to learn as you go along and experience things and discover things. The biggest single thing that you need is an inquiring mind and a desire to learn new things and discover what's going on and why you can do it differently and better. Where are the microphones now? We have one of the microphones up the front here. There's quite a lot of people up here that aren't... Uh, a microphone? Anybody got a question? Where's the microphones? Got one there? Cool. Yes. Hi. So when you were starting out your business as a entre young entrepreneur, what was the most important asset to start in your company? So it was definitely a lot younger than I am now. So it was a young entrepreneur, I suppose. Yes, I think the best asset is always, it was then and will always be the great people that you have. You cannot run a business without smart people. And that's why I'm imploring you all to consider a career in IT. This is an op obvious opportunity. You're not, if you're smart, if you're talented and you know what to do in technology, you're not going to get outsourced to India. You're not going to lose your job to a computer. This is the profession that has to be there for the rest of the world to grow and be better. So I always think it's the war on talent and great people in the company. And what we want is smart, motivated, passionate people that are skilled enough to start somewhere and learn more. Where do you see yourself and your company like five years from the future to now or in the future? Well, I, what I talked about with machine learning and natural language processing and digitization, I expect us to be a much, much bigger company. I expect us to be more dominant in the marketplaces that we're in and I expect us to be able to bring a lot of value back to Australia to create wealth here, to actually employ very strongly in the Australian marketplace and to help Australia get a name for itself as a technology leader, as a country that can build its own solutions, can, can build its own Googles and Microsofts. We don't have to be waiting for America to do everything, we can do it ourselves. When you think of Atlassian, Atlassian's a huge company. And I think we, Atlassian, and a few other companies are actually showing everybody that this can be done here. You can do it. If I could do it, and my friends could do it, and Atlassian can do it, it's always possible for you to do it. So remember, sign up for the Grok Learning Challenge. WiseTech wants to support you on this. We want you to find your way to discover a career. You don't have to work for us, but you just have to find a way of being in technology. We'd love to talk to you. We'd love to see you flourish. And every 10 students that pass this get a BBC microbit for their school. Thank you very much.